Legend tells of a legendary film, one that travels the hearts and minds of all those who watch it, flowing through your veins like a noodle in a soup of broth. Only one studio could create such an unassuming masterpiece. DreamWorks is one of the only studios that I can think of that is so consistently inconsistent, where they can create pure cancer one year and then drop true cinema the next. One of these set films is none other than Kung Fu Panda. Just like Poe, this movie from the outside seems like it should just be bland and not worth your time. But also like Poe, the more you delve deeper, the greater it really is. However, I keep asking myself, what makes Kung Fu Panda just so special? And I believe it's because this movie is a tale of a modern day Disney princess. But what exactly makes Kung Fu Panda a modern day Disney princess? Right from the get-go, the film doesn't waste your time with any small talk. Every scene is deliberate and to the point. What's wonderful is the amount of foreshadowing we get from the opening of the film, as we get a glimpse into our main character's mind, where he desperately would love to be OP, but in reality, he's just poo. The themes of corporate greed echo throughout the film. The Furious Five, very early on, are put on a pedestal and looking jacked as all hell, toys that can easily be seen as marketable, while Poe has an uphill battle to prove that he is worth buying into. This is essentially Poe's I want song, just without the song. At this point in the film, Poe is very meek and unconfident, as he can't even open up to his dad about dreaming that he was a kung fu master. So he lies that he dreamt about noodles and continues to work his soul crushing job. Clearly, this is a reference to the Kanye song Spaceship, where another bear who no longer wishes to work his nine to five and dreams of getting in a starship and flying away. They are most likely willing to reference Kanye here because he too was a black man living in China, where Ye first felt isolated, thus, leading him to develop a lack of love complex, which ignited his need to be admired to compensate for what he never received. As Ye also saw himself as a Disney princess. Within five minutes, they do so much subtle foreshadowing that it even feels intentional. Poe is clearly victimized by the world for being a mixed child, meaning he is a part of two worlds, but sadly, included in neither. These kinds of children will spend a majority of their lives attempting to fit in to amalgamate with the herd. But for mixed kids like Poe, he will be seen as the black and white sheep of the herd. As we see right away in his home, Poe does not fit in. To get Poe away from his stable yet soul-crushing work-life balance, a change of pace needs to be brought in. Enter Master Ugwe. He is this peaceful, chaotic agent of the universe. The puppet master that triggers Master Shifu into telling him that Tai Long is about to break out of prison where if he said nothing at all, Mans would still be locked up. And now, a dragon warrior must be chosen to defend all of China. Uwe's thought process is essentially, well, if I'm gonna die, might as well bring someone down with me. And I respect him so much for that. As Poe is readying himself to see who is chosen to be the dragon warrior, he is confronted by his father. This is the first real test Poe must face as a Disney princess. To take the easy way and spare his father's feelings again, or rip his heart out with the truth. This is the first moment we see him stand up for himself and reveal his true intentions, feeding into the film's message of being yourself is good enough. The universe rewards Poe by blasting himself into the sky in a ball of fire and allowing Uwe to see his potential as the dragon warrior. If he had lied again and successfully got off the fireworks cart, he would forever be a noodle boy, ensuring himself a life of self-defeat. Paralleling Poe's journey of self-discovery, we cut away to Tai Lung, where Poe was in prison in his own little pity party Tai Long is imprisoned in prison, stripped of all dignity and left to carry the cross of a turtle shell, 
where he could learn his final lesson of how to become the Dragon Warrior, forcing him to wait his turn and giving him a lifetime of self-reflection. Unable to look within himself, he only has eyes for the outside world. Tai Lung's exit parallels Poe's entrance into the Dragon Gate. As the two of them are each trapped in their own pit of darkness, one mentally and the other physically, and both use pyrotechnics to make their debut to the world. However, what separates these two is that Poe accepts who he is and is launched into the air while Tai Lung forces his way out and imposes his beliefs onto others, trying to create a destiny that was never his to begin with. Poe is welcomed into the Sacred Hall of Warriors. What the audience should pick up right away is that it's become nothing more than a modern day Disney film. Soulless references meant for the common folk to ooh and ah at. Poe, just like Jesus Christ himself, must tear down the consumerist aspect of this hall and reform it into a place of worship. All the while, Master Shifu fashions Poe, attempting to disenchant him from his destiny. Master Shifu is a clear fill-in for the evils of the Disney Empire. He represents the Mickey Mouse fill-in where he only cares about results and is statistics driven. Misunderstanding that the Disney goal is not the same as Destiny's goal. So disgusted by Poe's mere presence, he threatens to kill him and make him irrelevant, just like Disney does to anything that goes against their corporate bottom line. Master Shifu must learn that the big lovable fat guy is usually the most fun person in the room. That's usually because they haven't been able to look smacks to attract others to them and must use what most people lack, their personality. This is because Poe is the Disney princess for our generation. One that represents us. Yeah, you know what I mean. For us fat, lazy, hairy kids who lack a sense of direction and meaning. He represents the future where we will all be a mix of different races. These mixed kids are the future men of tomorrow. And Poe is here to guide us to that first step. As he has entered this ancient Disney castle and needs to find a way to free himself and them from their bigoted imprisonment. This is clearly juxtaposed through the Furious Five. Tigress, Monkey, Crane, Viper, and Mantis. Unlike Poe, these characters don't even have names, just labels. The film telling us, the viewers, that they are closer to NPCs that do what they are told, dehumanizing them and presenting them more as animals than characters. As Tigress is the closest being to being a fully developed character, she's given the suffix of S, giving her a female attribute letting the audience know she is closer to relevancy than the others. Just like the toys that we first see them as, they are stiff, rigid planks of wood. If we look at Poe's design, he is perfectly created, having him be a circle of black and white, as a character representing both the yin and the yang. His poor boy shorts, contrasting against the rich colors of the Kung Fu Palace, symbolize his still humble mindset and his jade green eyes symbolizing the jade dragon within him. Just look at their rooms compared to Poe's. His was fully decorated with toys, posters, and personal belongings to show that he was, in fact, a person. While the Furious Five have nothing but beds in their bedrooms, showing us they have nothing going on in their lives. They sleep, and then they turn on in the morning to master the secrets of Kung Fu and repeat the schedule for eternity. The Furious Five represent the state of modern day superheroes, that they are put through the ringer, gaining ultimate power at the cost of being utterly boring. While they can clear an obstacle course really well, what they lack is personality. That's why they oppose Poe so harshly. He is injecting life into their hollow lives. As time goes by, Slowly yet surely, Poe's infectious attitude 
starts to rub off on the others. As they slowly begin to stop their fat phobic comments and understand that they have no room to judge. All the while, Master Bugwe, satisfied with the trolling he's caused, is ready to move on to the next life. As Master Shifu begs him not to leave, Master Ugly responds that he must believe in himself as he fades away into a pile of leaves. This was a classic setup and delivery as Ugwe is an anagram for the phrase go away. Since he set the inciting incident by sending Tai Long away to stop him from obtaining the dragon scroll, and now that he has found the true dragon warrior, he can finally leave as well. He's so toxic, I love him for that. Thus, Master Shifu finally understands that he and everyone else must put themselves out there. That it's okay to be yourself even if you suck. Because sure, you might suck now, but that just means you have room to suck a little less tomorrow. Finally opening his eyes to see that Poe is not like other princesses and needs to be taught some other way. And now Poe faces his second real test to accept his identity as the dragon warrior. And one epic training montage later, Po and Master Shifu learn the importance of accepting who you are. Realizing just like how they would convince Kid Kanye to breakdance in the streets of China in exchange for lamb skewers, Po can be bribed with food to focus as well. Po for the first time accepts that he is fat, learns to both self-control his abilities and then his hunger. As the film progresses, so does Po in his training. He learns the ancient ways to be Pu and OP, yet he is still not ready. Master Shifu, terrified to learn Tai Long is returning, forces Po to read the Dragon Scroll. Just like how Disney believes there's only one way to make a movie, and endlessly repeats that process till the end of time, corporatizing the artistic process. Shifu believes that this one scroll will unlock Poe's latent abilities, but to everyone's shock, it does nothing. Realizing that Master Uwe was not calling it the Dragon Scroll, but actually the Dragon's Troll. The scroll was a fraud. Poe is a fraud. And now Poe must flee. A running imagery that is present throughout the film is Poe and the staircase that leads up to the highest point of the mountain. The first time, he can barely get to the top without passing out. Then, he is unsuccessfully thrown off by Master Shifu to scare him away. And there's one last attempt to completely fall off when Po is about to run home scared, but is only stopped by Master Shifu. And once he finally succeeds in quitting, he is allowed down, showing us he has hit his rock bottom on his own terms. But what is the importance of this mountain? Well, as Poe is now spiritually broken and at his lowest, he is more vulnerable to hear what his dad has to say. And the phrase, there is no secret ingredient, acts like a beacon of light and Poe's sea of misery, resuscitating his greatest attribute, his ability to make connections, connecting that the scroll was actually a metaphor. Mr. Ping's big reveal cracks me up every time I hear it, but also it breaks me in two. Because when I was a kid, I thought I was for sure adopted, as my dad had absorbed 30 years of that Middle Eastern sand tan on him while my little immigrant butt was fresh off to a country where it snowed for six months of the year. Seeing us together, I had my doubts, so I understood how it feels for your outside to not match what you are on the inside, as I am brown on the inside, but a white boy on the outside, meaning I am also a culture chameleon. This is the filmmaker's way of showing Mr. Ping being coy to Po, which is clever of them, because there is an ancient Chinese legend of the koi fish who struggles to climb up a waterfall with the herd. As the herd fails to reach the summit, they are mocked for their attempts and they all give up in due time. All but one. The one fish that succeeds to reach the top is rewarded the gift of becoming a golden dragon. 
I love that Poe learns the film's lesson by seeing his own reflection, realizing that just like him, life is more than just being black or white. As Poe learns the secret of the scroll, he realizes the truth of his universe. He isn't just Poe and not just OP. He is Poe. He is OP. They are one and the same. He is Pop. And he will now show Kai Long who his daddy is. What's beautiful is that we were all expecting the duck to reveal to us who Poe's dad really was. But instead, DreamWorks reveals who Poe is about to be a stepfather to instead. Meanwhile, the two forces of pure power struggle over the Disney Empire. They display the generic slugfest of throwing out punches to execute one another, thinking that is what makes you the Dragon Warrior. As Tai Lung throws out his Kung Pao's, he demands respect from his master. But how can Shifu respect someone who doesn't even respect themselves? What Po comes in to teach them is that it's not seeing someone executed that people enjoy, but how the execution is delivered. Now, reaching the top of the mountain a second time, he is a little less exhausted than he did the first. While Po might be physically fat, the Kung Fu masters are spiritually fat. Living in these larger than life luxurious temples, towering over the citizens, Po is one with the people, and we see him topple Tai Lung from atop the mountaintop, down to the city, leveling him to Po's position as if he's metaphorically saying, you're no better than anyone else here, dog. Po not only humiliates him with his sheer girth of creativity, but also reveals that he has surpassed him in raw talent. And then finally, Thanos snaps him away from existence, atomizing Tai Lung down to his molecules, spreading his ashes across all of China. The land can now begin to heal. And now, just like Kanye, he is beloved all throughout the land. Finally closing out the film, Po climbs the staircase one last third time and achieves a new world record, better than his previous run, and can rest peacefully alongside his master. Not because he is out of breath, but because he chooses to. While many strong themes are at play in the film, the most pervasive message is the satirization of the Disney princess trope, as DreamWorks is known for doing. Poe's journey is a clear deconstruction of the Disney princess archetype, starring the film living on the edge of desolation, with his quack of a stepfather who is suspiciously maidenless, as he keeps Poe at an arm's length by withholding secrets from him. When Poe is chosen to be the belle of the ball, his fantasy dream getaway turns out to be a consumerist hellhole, where he is the only overweight person in sight and is automatically deemed worthless, essentially mocking Disney's belief that the higher the weight, the lower the value, where the usual suspects in a Disney film need a big, strong man to save them at the end of the day. Ho accepts that he was always more than enough, perfectly putting that theme onto full display. Poe, for the first time, allows my people to be seen because he's so hard to miss, as well as proving to the world that you have no excuse not to make multi-millions. If this severely obese man on death's door can do it, what's your excuse? While you might be asking, well, being a princess is a female's job and Poe is a male. Well, you see, Poe is a dragon. And as we all commonly know, dragons are genderless, meaning my simile isn't a reach at all. Okay, so this film truly has it all. Great designs, amazing choreography, Jack Black. I mean, I do find it kind of ridiculous that they got Jack Black to voice this role when I know plenty of pandas that would literally kill for a shot at a film of this caliber. At the very least, he didn't pull any punches and went out of his way to put 100 pounds to play the character as faithfully as he could, and to this day has refused to lose that weight, proving to us that our culture is not just a costume to him. So good on him for that. No, my one true complaint 
is that I found the movie looked best at the beginning and end of the film. Don't get me wrong, the 3D art style is really great to look at and the animation is super based. But seeing the stunning 2D aspect make me wish we got a little more integration with the 3D. This movie was made back when changing the status quo of the look of these 3D films was not really a thing. But now that we live in a post Spider-Verse world, I'd love to see some ink style motion lines, hand drawn action frames, and more Chinese calligraphy automatopias pop up here and there. Just some ideas. I know it's too late to completely rework the art style since it's so established and beloved, but that doesn't mean they can't slightly tweak it. While this is mainly a video on the first Kung Fu Panda, the sequels deserve some love too, and I would love to break them down as accurately as I can one day, but for now, I'll just say that I love the theme of genocide present in the second film, telling the audience that if you're going to commit a war crime, make sure to do it right or that mistake will come back to haunt you as well as the themes of creative bankruptcy present in the third film, as Poe's biological dad does not know how to properly teach him, and the villain is a straight up Kratos ripoff, a minotaur which is of Greek descent, has the blades of chaos attached to him, and steals the souls of others, that just screams Kratos to me. Each of these films tests Poe in different ways, allowing him to grow as a greater dragon warrior, exploring the theme of identity in different ways for each outing. This fourth film, I assume, will test Poe's resilience to the absolute breaking point. By having Aquafina casted, Poe's ears and sense of balance will be put on full blast. DreamWorks has this knack for taking these seemingly bad concepts but allowing their artists enough freedom and trust to run wild with them. Not everything they release is an instant classic, but their films have this genuine care put into them. And even if they stumble, like Poe does, they get right back up afterwards. And now, we are finally reaching that long-awaited Kung Fu Panda 4 that DreamWorks is finally releasing in 2024. I would like to leave you with this thought. Just as Kung Fu Panda 1 starts with a foreshadowing of Poe's journey, he had to wait till his day came. But why release the film now of all years? Just like Uwe waited a lifetime for the Dragon Warrior to reappear, DreamWorks waited specifically for the Year of the Dragon to make Poe's return, and I couldn't think of a more fitting release date.